Hello, I'm Anthony. Today I'm going to give you a demonstration of a new feature that's been introduced with Cubase 14. That's the Pattern Editor. Now, even though the Pattern Editor is primarily designed for use with the drum machine, we're going to see that shortly, it's important to note that it can actually be used on any instrument track and you can actually freely mix combinations of patterns and MIDI parts on the same track. I'll give you a demonstration of that a little bit later. But for now, let's keep things nice and simple. I'm going to create myself a new drum track. I can either do it from the Add Track dialog, or I can do it from the lower zone by selecting the drum machine and click Add Drum Track there. Identical functionality. In the dialog, we have this new choice event type, and it defaults to pattern event. Don't get too upset about this feature. It's actually really pretty trivial. It simply determines the default type of event that's going to be created on the track, but you can, as I say, freely swap between them. So we're not locked in once we make this decision. Let's just click our track for now. Now we've created an empty drum machine track. So the next thing that we need to do is load up a preset into the drum machine. We're not going to concentrate on the drum machine today. We're really talking about the pattern editor, but let's get up and running anyway. Here are the drum machine presets for me to select. I'm going to choose down tempo movement. If as a matter of interest, you ever open this preset box and you can't see anything, open your download assistant and make sure you have this content installed, drum machine volume one. That's what will give you your drum machine presets. I had to load Cubase 14 manually because at the time, download assistant was very upset with me and I actually didn't get this content initially and didn't get any presets, but that's where they all are anyway. So now that we've loaded our drum track, if I jump over to the editor, because we've specified that this track is currently in pattern event mode, can you see it in the inspector? We see those samples represented in these 16 rows. These are called step lanes. You can have up to 128 of them per pattern per track and you can have 128 patterns on a track. So this is way, way more flexibility than you're ever going to need. But let's just take a quick look at what we've got so far. If I go to the beginning of this four bar part, I'll press play with no drum sounds loaded. Really simple bass line. Now I'm gonna add some kick hits. Each time I click in one of these little boxes, I'm generating a kick drum sound. You might note, however, that there's no visual representation of this in the project view at all, but the sounds will play. It's a little bit like Follow Transport in Groove Agent. If I get the song playing now, you can hear the kick drum sound and they play every bar. The reason that they're playing every bar is that this pattern editor is currently set up to be 16 steps long by this value in the top left-hand corner of the editor and the one immediately to the right of it tells you how long each one of those steps is, one sixteenth of a bar. Add those two things together and you get an entire bar. If I make the number of steps 32 instead and press play once more, now you're only gonna hit the, hear those kick drum sounds every two bars and there they are again. Now it's all very well and good to have this kind of follow transport feature, but we want to start editing this stuff in the project view. In order to do that, you just create yourself a pattern event in the project viewer. And because we're currently in pattern event mode on the track, every time I create a part in the project editor, there is the pattern and there are the notes. Currently separated by two bars, set the number of steps back down to 16, and now they'll be played every bar. So what is that thing? Well, it is an event. I can pick it up and move it just like I could as if I was manipulating a MIDI part. I can cut it up. If I cut this up in the middle of a bar, watch what happens with the notes. So the beginning of each pattern event determines when the pattern will start playing. The length of the pattern event will determine for how long that pattern is played. I'm just in the way of that there. You can see it disappearing off behind my head. Shrink it a bit, bit again. Now, unfortunately, you can't glue these things together. I don't know why. Hopefully, that's functionality that they will eventually introduce. So if I want to stick those two things back together again, I'm going to have to delete the second one and extend the first one again. So now let's have a detailed look at the pattern editor itself. Let's add a new sound. We'll choose this conga. If I click the little um, preview button, I can hear what it's going to sound like. 
And now I'm going to add some conga sounds to my pattern, but I'm not going to do it explicitly by clicking in the editor. It would be really easy for me to do that. But let's use some of the pattern editor functions to do it instead. There are multiple different ways for us to generate evenly distributed notes. Firstly, we have some dedicated buttons to add every second step, third step, fourth step. We then have arrow buttons to move those to the left and right. Below the every step buttons, we have this one called Euclidean. It's an unnecessarily complicated word that, that just basically means evenly spaced. Euclidean distance describes the, the shortest distance between any two points. So if we set our U, Euclidean pulse value, let's say for instance to three, it just basically means distribute three steps across the entire available range. We're playing with 16 steps here, such that there is the shortest possible distance between each one of them. Go up to four, and we're gonna end up with a pulse every fourth beat. Once again, we can then move that pattern forwards and backwards using our rotation feature. So at the moment, rotation is set to zero, but every time I incre increment this by one, you can see the pattern moving forwards by a single step. Now that's all very well and good for evenly distributed steps. If you want to get into randomized steps, we click the randomization button. And then we have two choices determined by this function down here. I think density is unnecessarily complicated. I'll show you how it works, but I'm really not a fan at all. Basically what it uses is the concept of different rhythmic patterns having different kinds of density. So at the moment, for instance, we've selected symbol as our kind of density heuristic. And now when I click the randomize button, you're gonna get a very small number of pulses because symbols tend to last for a very long time. As opposed to a hi-hat, closed hi-hat, is gonna give you the tightest or most frequent number of uh, pulses. So now if I cl click the dice button, you're gonna get a much larger number of features. I just don't get it. Why, why, why are we making things so complicated for ourselves? A feature that I much prefer is to switch into number of steps mode. Now I can specify exactly how many steps I want to occur over the range. Let's choose five. And now each time I click the die, I'm gonna get exactly five pulses, but they're gonna be distributed randomly. Let's get the pattern up and running again. Okay, let's add some hi-hats. Let's have six hi-hat pulses. Per bar. That'll do us. Now we're not required to have every one of these step lanes be the same length. Let's say for instance, we want to double the number of um, kick drum hits, but I don't want to have to explicitly include them in the editor. Well, I can do it simply by reducing the number of steps on uh, step lane number one. So let's reduce that to eight. And it now means that that lane is gonna play twice as often as all the others. And you can actually see it pulsing now out of sync with the other two. Well, it's in sync, but you know, out of step. So we have the global setting that specifies the overall pattern. And then we have individual granular control over each one of the step lanes, both its number of steps and its step size. There are a few other tweaks that you can apply to each of the step lanes as well. For instance, you can have a backwards or alternating direction for every individual step lane. You can set swing and offset values, again, all completely independently per lane. Down at the bottom of the pattern editor, we have the parameter lane. At the moment, it's, it's representing velocities. So here we can see the velocities of each of the conga hits. I can edit any of them individually by simply clicking in the velocity bar and dragging up and down. If I hold the shift key down and do the same, I can edit every conga hit simultaneously. If I head over to velocity variance, at the moment all of the variances are set to zero, but if I shift, click and drag, what I'm now doing is setting a 29% variance, a positive variance to each one of the velocities 
for every single conga hit. So I'm setting basically like the, the default position. And then I'm saying, well, anywhere within this range, you vary the velocity for me, take away some of that static value that you're going to get out of a sequence. It's very worthwhile experimenting with this feature on the vast majority of your drum sounds. They don't all have to be positive variances. You could have negative as well. But now every time this pattern plays, all of those different drum sounds have very slightly different volumes and it's really going to help bring the entire rhythm to life. That's my favourite of the new features that have been introduced. There are a couple of others that are fairly useful. Gate allows you to specify um, variable lengths of the, uh, of the notes that are played. Probability allows you to vary how often that note is played. By default, 100% probability means that every note is played every time. But if I drag this down, it means that particular note's now only going to be played 67% of the time. Offset allows you to move the notes forwards and backwards in time. And repeats, which I haven't found a great use for yet, literally repeat the note, multiple like subdivisions. Okay, so we've built our pattern. Let's say we're happy with it. At this point, I want to start creating variants of this pattern that I can distribute throughout my piece. So I'm going to head up to the pattern management dialog at the top of the window, and I'm going to say duplicate this pattern. So now I have two different patterns. Let's make the second pattern different in some respects. Oh, we've got an extra conga hit in there. I can now toggle backwards and forwards between these two patterns, and you can see them visually represented. As far as the project view is concerned, this is still pattern number one, and that's what this little number means. If I drop this little window down and choose pattern number two instead, you can see all of the notes change, and here's my inadvertent conga three. And we can have any combination of these patterns on the track. So let's chop up this pattern so that now we've got two different segments and I'm going to turn the first segment into number one pattern and the second into number two. As I select each of them, you can see them being represented in the editor. Let's say you're happy with that pattern as the basic template that you're going to have going for the majority of the time in your piece. So let's repeat all of that a couple of times. Let's say in this middle section, however, for pattern number two, you want to do something different. Well, you could duplicate it again and generate a number three pattern down below. But for demonstration purposes, I'll, I'll approach it from a slightly different perspective. I'm going to drop this little box down again. And this time I'm going to say convert pattern to MIDI part. Now the lower view switches into the MIDI editor. This is why I said earlier that this ch choice about pattern event on the track is really pretty trivial. All it means is that when you're performing an operation in the project, you're either going to be creating a pattern event or a MIDI part, but they are completely and freely interchangeable. Now, if you create a MIDI part, let's do it once again with this pattern over here. This is the last opportunity I have to turn that back into a pattern. If I press Control Z right now, I'm allowed to turn it back into a, into a pattern. But the moment I do anything else, I no longer have the ability to turn that event back into a back back into a pattern. Cubase basically can't remember all of the um, combinations of patterns and parts. So it gives you the opportunity to do it right there and then. But from that point onwards, it's a one-time edit. Finally, just to prove that patterns have nothing to do with drums specifically, let's go up to the bass line. Here's my bass line. But if I delete the MIDI part, turn this into a pattern event track instead, and now create it. This time it's defaulted to creating just six step lanes. And if you have a look at the original MIDI part, we go from D up to G, which is six notes. So Cubase has had an idea. It's basically said, this is your starting point. I'll give you six step lanes to play with. But of course, from that point onwards, you're completely free to create as many step lanes as you want. And now these step segments are representing bass notes. Now, if I play this bass line now, it's going to sound a bit odd because it's an octave too high. It starts off, Cubase basically starts off at C1 by default. 
but the baseline itself is operating in the zero octave range. So I'd need to drop those down by an octave. Now this is obviously at this point trivially easy, but why not? We'll just finish it off anyway. So I'm just going to reassign the two notes that I'm actually playing with at the moment down into the zero range and bring my velocities down a bit. And there we are. So a really powerful new feature. Pattern editing is going to make a huge difference uh, to my rhythm construction in Cubase. Hope you found this video useful. Please hit like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the Patreon and channel member links below if you'd like to help support my channel further. Thanks very much for now. I'll see you next time.